With that, I would like to introduce our dual immersion team. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. With that, I would like to start off introducing Thelma. Um, she is Thelma Gonzalez. She is our principal at Mark Twain. Welcome. Thank you. I see some familiar names, so I'm glad that you're here. So welcome to our Q&A for this evening. We also have Dr. Julie King. She is our director of special projects. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We have Courtney Gillette, principal at Billy Mitchell. Good evening, parents and families. I'm so excited to have you here this evening and excited for dual immersion to be expanding to Billy Mitchell. And I would also like to introduce uh, Miss Ileana Cruz, who is our eLERT at Billy Mitchell, and she is helping introduce and facilitate this evening. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Let me continue sharing my screen. Welcome back, Mama. All right. So we have organized this presentation into four parts. Um, I'll present a little bit of information and give you time to ask questions. Uh, the topics do include um, important dates, principles of du dual immersion, a day um, in a kinder dual immersion classroom, and then the selection process. Um, give me one second. I'm working off of two computers, so thank you for your patience. Um, the information that I present today um, will be a bit brief. Uh, the dual immersion website has other presentations with more detailed information. Um, you will have time to ask questions about each topic, and you can ask in English or in Spanish. Questions, if you have a question that pertains to another topic, the question might be put on hold until the appropriate topic. And then, um, please, you are more than welcome to contact us with any other questions that you may have. Uh, we will share our contact information at the end of this presentation. Um, selecting a school and a program for your child is, is a very important task and we want you to feel safe in your choice. Uh, so again, we will, we will share our contact information. All right, so with that, I'll go ahead and get started with um, some important dates. So our window, the, uh, the program is now accepting applications uh, through uh, up until February 25th. Um, each family submits the application by February 25th and you will receive, um, you will have a chance to be accepted. There is very little chance that um, your child will enter the program if they apply after uh, February 25th. So it is very important that you do submit your application by that date. We will notify families on March 4th. We will notify our parents by March 4th with information on acceptance or uh, the waiting list. And right now you do have to register uh, your child for kindergarten in Lundell. Um, you do not want to wait for the DI notification or the dual immersion notification. So it is open um, on our website. You can ap apply now uh, for kindergarten and you can find that on our website. And with that, so we do have our dual immersion program that is offered at two of our schools. Um, the first school is, one of our schools is Billy Mitchell Elementary. And the second school is Mark Twain Elementary School. As part of the application, um, parents, you must, or guardians, you must indicate what your preference is. Families that have indicated only one school will not be considered for the other school. If there is no space at, your de at the desired school, your name goes on the waiting list for the desired school. So if your heart is set at Billy Mitchell, uh, when you are applying, we recommend that you select only Billy Mitchell. Um, vice versa, if, you're, if you would want your child to attend Mark Twain, um, then we recommend that you only 
select Mark Twain. Um, to, all, to all of the families who have indicated their interest um, in both of the schools um, by noting first and second preference, for example, if you select Billy Mitchell as your first choice and then Mark Twain as your second choice, uh, during the selection process, um, we always consider your child for a seat at the school of your first preference. If there is no space, we do look for a space in the school of the second preference. Um, if they do not receive a seat at their second preferred school, there is no option for a seat at, at the other school. So we do, when you are making, applying and thinking about the school um, that you want your child to attend, we really ask you to really think about that because it is a commitment for six years. This program is starts in kindergarten and goes all the way through fifth grade. Um, so we, we do have you commit to that school. If your child um, has been selected to go, for example, to Billy Mitchell or to one of the schools, you are not able to, I'm sorry, let me go back. During your application process, when you are applying to, to the program, um, if you select a particular school, um, you can make any change up until February 25th. Um, you won't be allowed to make any changes after that date. So for example, if you have selected Billy Mitchell as, as your first choice and your only choice, after February 25th, you will only be considered for that school site. And with that, I would like to open it up for any questions um, at this moment, knowing that we will continue on with other topics. Hi, so regarding um, how many, well, regarding the registration, how many kids actually get into the program? Uh, Julie, if I can confirm with you, it's 104 students, is that correct? Yes, we have two classes at each school. So okay. that's 104 total. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other, any other further questions? Yes, Ms. Uh, Crystal, um, what was it? Uh, I'm gonna have you unmute. I, see, I believe you're still muted, Ms. Mosler. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Weird. Um, yes. So as far as um, you said, not being able to switch schools for siblings. Um, so my kindergartner has a sibling in the program already. And I put on the application, the school that his sister's currently at as first preference, obviously, but I'd rather have him in the program than not. But you're saying we wouldn't be able to, if for some reason we ended up at Billy Mitchell, we would never be able to switch into Twain if a spot became available and have them at the same school? Um, that is correct. Uh, Thelma, unless otherwise, that, yes, that, that is yeah, correct. Yeah, definitely. One of the great things, that's a great question. Thank you, Ms. Mouser, for asking that. You know, you are committing to a Longdell program. And so with that, your selection is going to be Mark Twain um, or uh, Billy Mitchell, right? For those who have been with me for the past six years, you know, we started with one class at Mark Twain a couple of years ago. We were very fortunate that I came on board and expanded to two classes. So that is so great to have. And now the expansion, even then I only had 56 spaces, uh, 52, sorry, 26 in each classroom. But now we're asking that we're going to expand that to Billy Mitchell. And we know that we want to keep siblings together. And this is a very hard decision for our families to, to make. Um, you might say, you know, I'm just going to commit to Twain and know that it's a sibling and knowing that if I don't get in, then I can be placed in the waiting list for Mark Twain. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. I, I'm going to answer some of the questions in the chat. Um, how do we make school, select, school selection changes? You can email me or Sharice Jones, and I will share that information um, at the end. 
you can email us if, if let's say you've already submitted an application and you selected a particular school or, or would like to make any changes, please email us and we will get in contact with you so that we can make those appropriate changes. Um, I'm just trying to go through all the questions here. The next question I can read, Emiliana. The next Thank question you. after this would be like, what does the selection process look like? What does it entail? So rather than explain the process, because it is a rather very lengthy process in regards to the categories you're in, during an email that Sharice Jones sent, sent, we want you to watch an 11 minute video. And it is a very transparent and really does detail the selection of the students. Uh, so please visit our website and it will give you a very uh, broad view of that selection. There's an, and then we'll drop the links here as well so that you're able to read them as we are presenting. Um, una pregunta es, ¿puedo hacer preguntas en español? Absolutamente. Estamos diciendo, tenemos alguien que va a traducir a nosotros. Entonces, las personas de inglés pueden escuchar esa pregunta en inglés. También quiero decir a las familias de español que nosotros tuvimos una sesión en la mañana, las nueve de la mañana, uh, y está completamente en español. Si les gustaría verla, uh, denos unos días y va a estar en la página web. Quick question they asked if we can, I believe maybe they're translating, right, Dr. Payne? I think so. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Why like to be accepted? What's the likelihood of being accepted? You know, it all depends on the applicants. One of the great news um, that I'm sharing is that I'm partnering with uh, Ms. Gillette. You know, it's a second site and with Ileana Cruz. So the odds of you being in the dual immersion program are a lot higher than they were in previous years. ¿Cómo saber si mi hijo está aceptado? How would I know if my child is accepted? Van a recibir una uh, carta. You will be receiving a letter. I believe March, 20, uh, March 1st. In, in March 4th. Yes, March 4th. You will be receiving notification whether your child is accepted into the program or if they are placed in the, on the waiting list. Okay. Another question is, my child is enrolled for immersion program already. When and how do I enroll him into kindergarten? My son is currently attending FDR. So remember, this is kindergarten. So you are enrolling for kindergarten. I'm assuming that Ruben uh, Reynoso, this is probably a TK student. Uh, please make sure that you fill out the forms, the applications for the dual immersion program. And we'll drop our website here so that you're able to complete that digitally. Um, I have two questions, if I can. Yes. Uh, one, when, do you, uh, when will Billy Mitchell expand their dual um, language to other grades? Is there, I know they're just doing it for kinder. Is there, are they looking to expand to other grades as well? Absolutely, and I would love to speak to that, Ms. Garcia. Uh, we are starting the program with two kindergarten classrooms, which is really exciting because it does, as Principal Gonzalez said, um, give about double the amount of spaces for us to welcome applicants into the program. And then for each subsequent year, we will add on a grade level. So the following year, we will have two kindergartens and two first grades. The year after that, we will add on our second grade until we have a full program all the way up through our fifth grade. And then my second question is my both of my children are already attending a dual academy, so they're fluent in both English and Spanish. I, I applied or I sent an application for my kindergarten who's going into kinder now. If he gets accepted, will his brother who's in second grade get accepted automatically? Good question. I can take that, uh, Ms. Gillette. Um, he would, it, it all depends on the grade. So no, it doesn't automatically guarantee your second child to be part of that program because we also have students in a waiting list in different grades. But it does not mean you can't place your uh, second child in a different grade level in a waiting list. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and then questions is, where do we continue their DI education after graduating? Um, Dr. Kane, I know the answer, but I figured you would take this one. I would love to take that one. So uh, we are fortunate enough that our dual immersion program continues right on into middle school at Will Rogers Middle School. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to continue working towards um, their bilingual, uh, their um, 
why am I blanking on the name? The 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 award they can get at graduation in high school. Literacy, seal of my literacy. Seal of my literacy. Thank you. And we are also, uh, though it is not our program, uh, Sentinella Valley then continues in ninth through twelfth grade to support our students and making their way all the way through. Thank you, Dr. Kane. I'm just going to continue with a couple of que the questions that are written here, and then we'll move on to the second uh, part of our presentation. The question is, how many applicants do you receive in a typical year? That's a very good question. It, it has varied. It has increased throughout the years. Uh, so it varies anywhere between 100 and 120, 130. The fortunate thing for these families that are here with us tonight um, and earlier this morning or this school year that's coming up is I only had 56, 52 spots, right? It was only Mark Twain that was, uh, so half of these families would get in and half of you uh, were not able to get in. But we're so fortunate that in LESD, we're expanding the program that it will now allow at least 104 families to be part of our dual immersion program. And the question again is, when will you be notifying if my child is accepted? Again, March 4th, we'll be receiving a letter. That's a deadline. Um, one person, one integral person who is not here tonight, I uh, shall be sending you letters for those on Mark Twain is Cherise Jones. So for those families who have been with Mark Twain, uh, you've known her for many years. Uh, she's still part of our program. Uh, so do expect a letter. You're more than welcome to call her at our site. And as I shared earlier, we're excited to have Ileana Cruz, who is the e-alert at Billy Mitchell. Um, la pregunta es, ¿para aceptar a cada niño es a través de alguna rifa o por su nivel de idiomas? Muy bien pregunta. Esto es, uh, son tres categorías las que tenemos. Entonces, ellos están en una forma donde está seleccionado, uh, random selection. Y todo eso nuevamente, quiero que vean un video que tenemos en la página web que les explica cómo son esos pasos para que ellos uh, sean seleccionados. A uh, follow-up question to that would be, um, do you hold that number as your wait list? You do. So whatever selection number you're in, that will continue to be your wait list number. También una parte que entiendan si no son seleccionados al programa, ese número que tienen uh, continúa con ustedes y son seleccionados en la lista de espera. And then last question that I see on here is, do you accept an equal number of native English and native uh, Spanish speakers? So 52 students of each, absolutely. That is the goal to have a balanced um, program. Uh, we want, we call them as language one or language two, L1 to be a balanced either the Spanish half and the Spanish English. But I will go into that perfectly is a great segue into what I'm going to be speaking and talk about the program. And before I have this question, in the last six years of the program, has there been an instance where siblings um, enter kinder, uh, where a sibling, sorry, it keeps moving. In the last six years of the program, has there been an instance where a sibling kinder students did not receive one of the 26 available in the dominant English? Um, it, it has varied. Um, and what we've noticed is they either go on a wait list, um, and then we've called people from a wait list, whether they've been at Mark Twain, within that time of the trimester one. So it does vary every year and it varies based on the number of applicants. And do the students stay with the same classmates throughout the years? No, we try to balance that uh, throughout the years, hence the reason we have now two classes. And some of my families have known that for the previous year, they kind of cohort stays together, but with the expansion, we're able to allow them to uh, experience different peers um, and based on their levels as well. Thank you for the questions, I appreciate them. So I'm gonna move on now to the next topic, which is truly, oh, let me change my screen, the core tenets of this dual immersion program, right? I know that selecting a dual immersion program for your child is something that you do not take lightly. And I thank you for being here with us tonight to know more about this program. So definitely one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that the core tenets of both our dual immersion programs are the linguistic balance, which is that question that you were asking earlier, that balance of that 50-50 of students that, who are modeled English peers, as well as model Spanish speaking peers. And so they will be English and Spanish daily, right? And the next slide, not just yet, but I will share with you how that looks like in that balance of that English and Spanish daily to our students. 
But most importantly, I need you to understand that the rich literacy and content instru instruction continues in that language. That they regularly use both of those languages because they're learning at the same time. And students learn differently. So I want to remind yourself, you know, it's very easy to compare someone who's in the dual immersion program and say, but you know, that peer is already writing in English. Did I make this decision? They're already reading in second grade. Remember, in dual immersion, the, there are a reading and writing in two languages. And so here is the 90, it's what's known as a 90-10 model that we really emphasize here at um, LASD. And so one of the things that I want you to remember is the emphasis in Spanish begins early on in kinder, where you have those 90% of the time that Spanish is being spoken. And as you see the years progress, stronger emphasis on learning and reading and writing in Spanish starts in the early years. But that rich English literacy activities and the idea of that transferring of that second language then begins with automatically into the second, I'm sorry, the third, fourth, and fifth grade. But you will also see other needs for third and fourth grade progress at their own level. So you need to understand that each child learns differently. But this is why we ask for that commitment for this program, these six years, because we want them to be a fluent reader by fifth grade as they make that transition into middle school. Ms. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, um, yes. our interpreter has a question. Yes. Um, Would you please slow down? I can't keep up. <laughs> yes, can you please slow down? I can't keep up, Ms. Gonzalez the question. Uh, what she's asking is that we slow our pace a little bit so she can keep up with the translation. So I will speak a little slower. Uh, definitely one of the exciting things that uh, we have here that I would love to celebrate this year um, is that we have current data for our current fifth graders. And so, you know, we are in a, in a pandemic. And I know for those that were with us, that struggle was huge. Our students learning what is happening to the program. But I'm very uh, glad to share with you, excited that, you know, that 70% proficient beyond that Spanish was achieved for our fifth graders. And then that progress where we monitoring those two languages, right? Because now we're assessing in English and Spanish, there's that 95% of students are making that sufficient progress in Spanish to be in, on track to that seal of biliteracy that Dr. Kane previously explained. The next slide would be, um, the celebration, oh, she has it twice. So at this point, are there any questions in regards to the second part of our presentation? I do see there's a few questions in the chat. I'm not quite sure if those were answered before, we, before you started, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, in the last six years of the program, has there been an instance where a sibling enters kinder, did not receive one of the 26 seats available in their dominant language, English or Spanish? Yeah, and I think if we answered that earlier. It all depends on the number of applicants, and we've seen both when they're able to be a part of the program based on the waiting list. Okay. I believe we answered Mrs. Uh, at your question as well. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Rodriguez. My child is already in TK at Billy Mitchell. I already registered him for dual immersion. Do I need to enroll him as a new student in kinder or as, or as a returning student? Um, so you will be receiving, so if he is already registered at Billy Mitchell, he will be receiving, you will be receiving uh, a notification through your email to, to um, it's not to re-register. And Courtney, if you could help me with that. It's of course, yes, Mr. Rodriguez, and to anyone who already has a TK enrolled and attending, what you would receive is something called a SNAP code. And we will prepare families before that time so you could look for it in your email. You do not have to complete registration again. It's a simple confirmation that you are returning. Your child is returning for another year um, of school. So 
You only have to register once. And then following that, you would just confirm each year. Um, and the process is very easy uh, via email and snap code. Mm -hmm. Are there any further questions on the topic? I, I have one, I don't know if it's outside, but if we get placed on the wait list, by when will we be notified, hey, you made it in, or is there a cap? Very good question. By trimester one, the end of trimester, that uh, wait list then uh, kind of ends. So it expires. But it all depends on those decisions that families are, um, are making, right? Sometimes every year it's varied for a Mark Twain where there's times where I have people who commit to the program and I don't tap into the wait list. Where about two years ago, we were tapping into that wait list more than ever because of certain circumstances. But you can always call after you receive your acceptance letter. You can always call Ms. Jones at Twain or Ms. Cruz and they will let you know where you are exactly on the wait list. Now, if we didn't make it and the wait list expires next year, do we have to reapply or do we um, stay in the level that we were as a wait list? You stay within the level that you are, it expires. Um, and sometimes I've had families who will go to a different program um, elsewhere. You know, I know there's maybe some families here currently that are not shopping around, but definitely applying elsewhere to see which program they are going to commit to. I do see another question. Do Mitchell and Twain share the same bell schedule? We share the same starting and ending time. What you might have slightly different might be like the recess or the lunch by a couple of minutes, but the starting and ending time uh, are the same as well as vacation days. So if you have two students at different uh, school sites, which we have a few, I do know that the times remain the same. And it looks like there's one more, uh, two more questions. What happens if a student drops out after the third trimester? I can so help it, answer a couple of the questions that I see in the chat. Um, and speaking to a dropout, I think, you know, we, some circumstances are beyond uh, control. For example, if a family moves out of state, um, but, uh, you know, if there, we do monitor students in our programs in both our, our English program and our dual program to make sure that they are doing well, that they are, adjust, are adjusting to their kindergarten school year. Uh, and we would certainly work with you and your child if there were any concerns along the way to make sure it is a best fit and do everything possible to have your child continue with their commitment. Um, and then I'm also seeing a question in the chat about start and end times for the school day. Uh, we currently start at 8.30 a.m. at the elementary schools. Um, through third grade, we dismiss at 2.30 p.m. And then in fourth and fifth grade, we dismiss at 2.55. And that helps greatly to uh, with dismissal time traffic uh, alleviation. So those are our current times for start and end. Okay, we're going to go ahead and continue with our presentation. Next topic is um, a day in a, D in a DI kindergarten. What does that day look like for our students who are in kindergarten and are in dual immersion? Um, to start us off, on, I have a, a short clip to, that you can see that we're going to watch. Um, this is, these are our kindergartners. You will see some of our teachers and some of our students in costumes because we do have days where our students wear costumes, they are superheroes for the day, or we have pajama day um, in kindergarten or at the school as a school-wide um, event. So you will see that in the videos, um, but you will, you will notice that they do all of their other activities that we offer, garden, uh, physical education, math, science, social study, language arts. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and play the video.
So with that, I'll go ahead and uh, stop sharing my screen. I do see a couple of comments or questions already in, in, in the chat. Um, do you do monthly testing to see where the student, where the students are in, at in both languages? Yes, um, yes, we do. Uh, so we don't do monthly, assessment. we do one-on-one -on -one assessments. So we're very fortunate that there are benchmarkers that we have for our students. And then there is a pacing guide that we follow. One good question that was asked earlier on, you know, if you notice students are wearing their masks, so how do you know if they know their sounds? And so quick reminder that every teacher in LESD has a microphone where they're able to teach and, and students are able to hear that instruction. But most importantly, especially in the primary grades, when I say primary grades, I mean kinder and first grade, a lot of these assessments are done one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Diana, ojalá que mi hijo pueda entrar. Sí, me gustaría que todos entren uh, a los programas. And do we have after school programs? Yes, LESD does have a wrap up program uh, reaching uh, all potential. So once you are enrolled, you will see uh, that they will join us in some of our kinder orientations where you are able to get some of that information. Okay, and the last uh, section that we will talk about tonight is the selection process. What you need to know about the acceptances and the wait list. Uh, and uh, Juliana, if you would, there we go, thank you. Um, this is a, and uh, Principal Gonzalez alluded to this earlier, this is a very detailed and complex process that you can watch in every minute detail on the videos posted on our website, which were uh, listed in the chat earlier. Uh, this The video is about 11 minutes, which doesn't seem terribly long, but it would take up the rest of our meeting. And so we're not going to go through it now, but you can watch and Ms. Jones walks you through exactly how she goes through putting children, organizing them by their dominant language, by the tiers, by the, ran the randomization process, how it happens and how she actually builds classes. So I really encourage you to watch that video so that you can get all of the information and your questions answered. So uh, you, as we said before, you will be notified of your acceptance or of your placement on the wait list by March 4th. Uh, but a reminder, once you uh, receive an acceptance letter, you do still have to enroll by the deadline. If you don't respond, uh, you don't get into the program. So you do need to follow the instructions on the acceptance letter to make sure that you have your child registered, that you attend our events, you'll have more uh, opportunity to check out the program uh, by waitlist. You'll be notified by phone, by email. 
to let you know where you are on the wait list. You can call in or email to check in and see where you are on that. And again, we do want to remind you uh, that you need to enroll in kindergarten now. Don't wait, enroll in kindergarten to reserve a spot and that information will transfer should you be accepted into the dual immersion program. I did see a question that just popped up, so we'll go ahead and just take it about whether or not students are assessed for their language uh, prior to uh, getting into the program. And in previous years, yes, we did. We did do assessments of students in English and in Spanish to gain an idea of where they, were, they had the most strength uh, in language. We are not doing that now. Um, we are not able to bring children in one-on-one -on -one to do those assessments. So we are relying on the questions that you answer in the application. You will see there is a set of seven questions where you tell us where your children's language strengths lie, how they, what they understand most, the language they use the most. And we will use that assessment to guide us in placing your child either in the Spanish uh, dominant uh, group or the English dominant group. Uh, are there other questions along this line? Again, it's, there's so much information in the video and I see the English and the Spanish have just been posted in the chat. So I really encourage you to check those out. But are there any other questions or related questions at this time? Do we know prior? Uh, when, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ms. Gonzalez, but when you fill out your application, you will receive a notification letter that your application was received and this is the group that your child has been assigned to as to which language group we see their strengths most lie in. That is correct. Thank you. Excellent, I'm so glad you're watching the videos. All of you, I encourage, mm -hmm. they're, really, they're really well done. And I credit uh, Ms. Cerise Jones, who you're not meeting tonight, but you will get to know her well when you watch the videos and they answer all your questions. So please check them out. So what I, I would like to end is apply for the program. If you're already here, you're interested. I know that you are considering the program, whether you're out of district, whether you are within the district, you may not know quite sure, do I want twin, Billy Mitchell? I mean, that's a very hard decision uh, because both sites are great. Uh, but do know that I will share with you, I work very closely with uh, Principal Gillette and Ileana Cruz and uh, Cherise Jones work very closely. We're excited to expand the program, you know, across the district for the, our teachers to collaborate more with dual emerging teachers within our, our homegrown uh, program here. But definitely, if you, if you thought about a question in the future, you think, oh, I forgot to ask this, do not hesitate to reach out to Cherise Jones at Mark Twain or Ileana Cruz. We have their information here. And if you're not able to capture it now, please visit our websites. All of that information can be found in there. I do see another question. Uh, how does out of district selection work? If I have a child already in the DI program, should I register his sibling and request a permit now? Again, all of this is covered in the video, so I encourage you to watch and you'll see our tiers, and we do prioritize siblings in the first tier. So if you have a child already enrolled and participating in the dual immersion program at Twain, when you apply, your child will be placed in that first tier because they are a sibling of an already participating student. Uh, so um, if you are interested, as Ms. Gonzalez said, apply now. And be, just and, because you have a sibling doesn't mean you don't have to apply. You still have to fill out the application. Don't forget that part. That's critical. Every student needs an application. Thank you. So please apply. And the question also is, do not worry about the permits right now. Once you're accepted into the program, you will receive a letter requesting that permit. Um, obviously, if you're internal, we're able to uh, contact the schools directly. But out of districts, you'll get a letter uh, for you to submit to your out of district. 
Hi, uh, I asked the question earlier about the students dropping out. And the reason I asked it really was because you had mentioned that the wait list expires after the first trimester. So if for whatever reason a family moves and the kid is pulled out of the program, does that spot remain empty for the remainder of the year? Or do you try to reach out to some of these families that were on the wait list to try to fill the spot? Yes, we still honor that number. So what we say expires, we're not calling families for the wait list. So let's say you were number five on that list, it expired. We still keep that list and you would be that number five to be contact. Um, and like Ms. Gillette uh, emphasized earlier, there's circumstances that are out of our control, you know, they move, but we definitely fill those primary grades so early on. Uh, classes tend to sit at 26, uh, those primary grades, because um, we believe in the program being essential and the foundation, of the foundation skills being so critical, but definitely you would be contacted. Great. And let's say you know, this, our student isn't able to be accepted in the kindergarten year. Uh, are we able to try to, or register or, or sign up again for first grade, second grade, something like that? So we do accept students in other grade levels and it's, you know, depending on the circumstances. So I'm not gonna say no, definitely there is an assessment to bring it back into that uh, program. One of the things that we do value is people who have been in a dual immersion program. So like I said earlier, some families aren't able to make it to our LASD programs. They might move to a different, maybe in Hawthorne or uh, Redondo Beach, continue in the program and then try to reapply uh, if need be in the further grades. Sorry, right, last question. Uh, I know you say you're trying to fill the, the classes with essentially 50-50 uh, Spanish dominant, English dominant students. What happens if there are not enough applicants of one of those languages uh, to make the classroom full 50-50? Would you then pull from uh, the other dominant language uh, just to fill the class or how would that uh, scenario work? That's a very good question. Uh, unfortunately, we've been very fortunate that it's it's more that we end up with the program because with uh, 56 spots, we end up having it a very equal or those on the wait list, but we would follow the wait list and then move on to the next language if we were to face that dilemma. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. I'm Thank gonna go, I think there's a couple of questions. Of course, uh, there's a couple of questions here. Um, we asked about the permit request, so hold on to that. Um, will this be posted somewhere? Yes, so we'll be posting the English and the Spanish. Uh, maybe then by next week, Dr. Kane, I'm not quite sure what the timeline is. Yes, but today's Wednesday. Yeah, so by next week, yes. We will get it. Keep, keep, keep checking that, but we will do our best to get that up by, by Monday. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Mosler, for the positive um, reinforcement. She's also our PTA president. Um, so if you want to join PTA at either site, let us know. Um, so my district requires acceptance into the program before I can even apply for the release permit. What is the timeline between that acceptance? Very good question. That's why we try to give you those letters by March. And we have this enrollment early enough for you to submit that letter to your district. So by March, the first week of March, you'll have that letter. I have a question. So this is the first time, well, I, it's my first child that we ever enroll in school. And I just finished the application for the kindergarten um, like program. What's the next step that I need to take in order to complete the whole process of like enrollment? So if you've already submitted the dual immersion program and you've registered the child, correct? They're registered already? Yes, for the dual immersion program, and then I just finished the kindergarten application, and then it sent me to a different link, and it said um, next steps, and then it just gave me a bunch of like steps to take. But I do, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do then. Yeah. So just wait for that confirmation. Once you've submitted with um, Ileana Cruz and uh, Sharice Jones, they will be sending you letters, uh, okay. letting you know uh, that next step. Okay, but this be, is for. This is for the dual immersion program or is this for the kindergarten? The kindergarten. 
for the dual immersion program in kinder. So we only take kindergarten students right now. So today's okay. presentation is to talk about dual immersion program at LESD. Okay. okay. I was just gonna add on Principal Gonzalez for the kindergarten enrollment or registration. Um, if you've also completed that, that's wonderful because enrollment did open yesterday, February 1st. And uh, we, we appreciate, we, we really wanna encourage you to get those applications completed as well. Um, and then you would typically hear from the school, the office staff confirmation that your um, registration is complete and there are no missing components. If there is anything additional they need, the office will reach out to you and let you know so your um, application can be completed. Okay, thank you. And I think Ryan, you had a question. We also applied to Torrance DI, although LESD DI is our preference. We are residents of LESD. Do we enroll in our homeschool and LESD and then also fill out the permit from and ask to be released at the same time? Um, like Principal Gillette said, enroll now. So whichever uh, your homeschool is, enroll. And obviously you will make that decision uh, when that time comes, whether you're accepted into the LESD program or into the Torrance DI. But definitely be sure that you register for LESD as a kinder student. I have a question. Don't forget to submit this. If my child's enrolled in PK, would I need to re-enroll her for kindergarten? So when they're a TK LASD student, we have their information. So let's say um, that information stays rolls over to their homeschool. Uh, but what you would apply would be for the dual immersion program if you're interested in it. In it. And then I see, do I have to fill out an application for my son who's going into third grade, or is that a different process? Once you're enrolled in LASD, you do not need to do anything. Um, they will roll over to that school site. So if you're a second grader this year, um, you don't need to re-enroll. Next year, uh, we have their information. They'll stay with the site. Um, I wrote that question. He is not part of the ELSD. They're coming from other schools. Um, so he's attending another school here by Culver City, and we're moving to Lawndale. Then definitely, yes, you want to register him for third grade. Okay, is, there, is it the same website or is it another website that I need to go to? Same website, it'll ask you for the grade um, and the information. Okay, beautiful, thank you. Yes. I think we have answered all the questions that were in the chat or that you have shared here tonight. So I wanna go ahead and thank our families and parents for being here this evening. Um, some of you I know we saw today as well. So I'm so happy that you have joined us to learn about the dual immersion program. And we look forward to your child's application and next steps. So please continue to reach out with any questions. You can call either school, visit our website. Uh, we'd love to support you in any way. So you are completely informed for this process. And with that, I will say good evening and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us.